Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I am doing a video on being a pharmacy technician. I posted a video a few videos back and I will attach it here above, but it was basically a video of a day in the life. I didn't really go too much into it, but a lot of you have requested that I go further into it. So I wanna start off this video by saying I am a retail pharmacy technician. Um, retail and hospital, they're two different things. Um, I hear they're very different. Um, kind of the same gist when you need to know like the federal laws and all that stuff, abbreviations and things like that. But hospitals do compounding and stuff and then you're bringing medication to patients, you can do IVs, all that. But for pharmacists, or for retail, it's um, more like foot traffic, like CVS, Walgreens, Rite Aid, all that fun stuff. So for me, I am at one of the big corporations for retail and I am the lead pharmacy technician. I got that position in February and I'll kind of break it down a little bit because I'm still learning every single day. There's so much I still don't know and so much I know and so much I'm learning. So for me, I got offered the position seven months after I was hired and I passed my PTCB exam, which is what you need to become a lead technician. So it's kind of like a manager. So I'm not called the manager, but I'm called the lead tech. Basically, I manage all of my technicians. Any issues they have, they come to me. I tell them where they're going next. Um, I'm up to date on their trainings, all that fun stuff. And like you could technically write them up as a lead tech. I never want to write anyone up. Obviously, if I had to, I would. But so it's basically just a manager position for those of you who may be like, what's a lead tech? So anyways, when I was hired, you don't, it depends on what state you're in, definitely look into your laws at your in your state. But for me, I just applied and they called me, got hired obviously. So here you only need to be 18 or older and you needed um, your high school diploma. And um, some places I believe you actually need to be like PTCB certified. Um, like I said, check your state laws. But I applied, got the position. I love the pharmacy, I just want to say that. It is, for me, my store is super, super busy. We're very high uh, high demand, I think it, that's what it's called. Like, there's times where we feel like, I think daily, I this number might be wrong, if someone who my coworkers is watching this, but I'm pretty sure it's like 600 scripts a day on like a Monday or something. Weekends are a little bit different, but, um, Sorry, I'm watching my puppy, seeing if he's about to use the bathroom on my floor or if he's just like bored because we're about to go for a W-A-L-K. He just sat down. So anyways, um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so mine is very, very busy. I will kind of break it down for you guys and then towards the end of this video, I'll give you like advice and tips and tricks and all or what you should know if you're new to the position, etc. So I kind of want to just break down the pharmacy for you guys. So there is different stations. We have pickup, drive through if your pharmacy has a drive through a drop-off station, production one and production two. So pickup and drive through are exactly that. People come through the drive through the pickup line and they have prescriptions that are ready to be given to them. So they tell you their first and last name and their date of birth and you go. On the screen it'll tell you the medication and the price of it obviously and what bin number it's in. In the pharmacy, if you've ever been inside of a pharmacy, you'll see those bins. That's where we keep all of our scripts. So it could be in bin five and you go in bin five, grab all their scripts, make sure it's the same patient, all that fun stuff. Same thing for drive through those are kind of pretty much the same exact thing. Um, so then we have something called drop-off. And drop-off is any issues you guys have. So if someone has an issue with insurance, they have a GoodRx coupon, um, they want to do a refill, anything like that is always drop-off. So pickup is strictly for pickup. That's when you know something is ready, not because you want to do refills and stuff. So we have our drop-off station and with drop-off we have something called QT, which is Q triage. So that is all of the incoming scripts that we have. So anything a doctor sends, it goes straight to the QT. And from the QT, that goes to the pharmacist, which is QV1 and QV2. This, it can get kind of difficult. So if you wanna take notes, you guys can take notes. Cooper, Cooper, hey, no. So anyways, at drop off, we do insurances issues, we can call doctors, our offices, um, call other stores if we're doing transfers to another store, all that stuff. There are certain things pharmacists can only do and certain things that techs can only do. Um, 
Hey. So if you're a drop off and honestly, it depends on your pharmacy, but for us, we kind of like, if there's a certain number that drops into QT, like let's say 10 things, everyone will kind of jump in and just try to clear it. Cause here's the flow of it. It goes QT. That's when all the pharmacists call everything or the doctors call everything and it goes straight to there. Any insurance stuff, new scripts, refills, 90 day requests, all of that stuff is in QT. Cooper, that's all in QT. So a tech or a pharmacist will do QT and that's where the medications are. Um, you f I'm trying to explain. So like, the name of the medication will be there, the day supply, the quantity, refills, what doctor it is, um, the date it was written, insurances, when we want it filled, all of that good stuff. So that's where you kind of need to know your drugs or you need to know your abbreviations like PO means by mouth because doctors will write, take one tablet, PO, Q, A, P, R, N, which is like take one tablet every eight hours as needed. So that is where you kind of need to know your abbreviations. And it also, if you know that, excuse me, if you know them, it makes it a lot easier to just type things in because you just type the abbreviation and then it'll type it out for you completely. So that's QT. And then once we send one of them that we fill out in QT, it goes to QV1, which is where our pharmacists then verify it. And that make, they make sure everything's correct, day supply, doctor, all that. Basically everything the text you, your pharmacist will always check. So they check it and if it's good, then that goes to QP, which is production, which what I talked to you guys about is production one and production two. So once it's verified, it goes to them. So if there was ever an issue, like the pharmacist is like, hey, you did the wrong day supply or you wrote the wrong um, abbreviation or SIG code or whatever, abbreviation is called SIG codes. Um, then they'll just let you know, they'll show you kind of what you did wrong so you guys know for next time. Um, so anyways, then QV1, it goes to QP, and that's when it pops up into my queue. And on my screen, so production one is counting and phones. So that's you counting out all of the scripts and answering all of the phones and doing a bunch of other stuff. So production one has, for me at least, we have like 15 scripts on each page, and there's so many pages throughout the day. You can have 10 pages throughout the day. You can have 30 pages throughout the day all that stuff and they're all in time order. So basically everything's in time order and you print it line by line and your production two person goes and has the labels, goes in the aisles, finds the right NDC, the right drug, all that. They put them in the basket, they organize the baskets for you and then you count. So if I'm counting right now, I'm on the phone, I have all my baskets stacked here, I'll take it, scan it and you know count it out in the curvy all that fun stuff so that's production one production two is basically what i was just telling you guys it's somebody that's basically helping man the production station making sure we're not going red because there is times where um you can have a bunch of you can have 59 a.m's due right and you're at 8 50 it's 8 50 a.m and you're still on 8 a.m's you're going to start to see your queue be red so just kind of warning you like hey this is past due also, everything is in time order, especially when you put it on the pharmacist station. So production two is basically just pulling the drugs. They're pickup two if a pickup two is needed, depending. Like I said, all this kind of depends on the pharmacist and where you work, or they are drop off also. So um, basically, just helping attack production and helping other, helping assist other stations. Um, drive through is kind of the same thing. Like I was telling you guys earlier, it's the same thing as pickup. So we also have something called QV2. QV2 is once I finish counting everything out, scanning my credentials and putting that on the pharmacist for the pharmacist to check, it's them just basically checking the pills, making sure it's the right pills in the bottle, the right, um, the right patient, just making sure everything's good. And that's when they bag it and they put them in little bins and pick up person will put the bins away throughout the time or throughout their shift as they have the, uh, as they have the time to do that. So it's a lot, it's really fun for me. I know there's, I have a few friends that worked in a really slow pharmacy and for me, I'm very fast paced. It's honestly, if you guys want my advice, if you're going to work in like a high end or not a high end, a high demand, is that what it's called? 
high demand pharmacy like so many people have worked in the pharmacy and ended up leaving after a month two months or just never came back because it is very stressful especially if you're working in a high-end place like i am um for our store it's drive through you're stuck at drive through so we like to switch stations every two hours um so like if I'm on production one for two hours from eight to 10, 10 to 12, I'll go to do to pick up. And then we'll kind of just rotate everybody. Whoever comes in, we'll rotate. We kind of never want to make sure someone's on the same station. Sometimes though, it happens that we are on the same station for a long time, whether we have call outs or super busy, whatever the situation may be, but we always like to try to switch as much as possible. So, um, the pharmacy, I love it. I'm a very fast paced person. I've worked in restaurants before. I'm like that go, go, go person. But for some people, it's just not for them because you do have customers that are, um, hey, hey, Kid, Silly, you want a treat? Sorry, I'm like throwing french fries <laughs> for my dog so he can leave me alone for the rest of the video. So, what was I saying? Oh yeah, um, it's just very, uh, it's a lot. It, it is a lot. Our drive through is nonstop. It, like today, we were, I was stuck at it for two hours straight and the person before me was stuck there two hours straight and the person after also has to do with this whole COVID situation going on. I hope everyone is safe and healthy throughout that. We all do wear masks right now and gloves. We clean every hour to make sure everything's clean, the pens, everything that we touch throughout the day, everything is being cleaned. Anything patients touch is being cleaned. So same thing with pickup. Our pickup hasn't been as busy because of COVID, but there are times like when I was leaving earlier today, we did have a big line. So a pickup two came to make sure that we could get that line down as much as possible. Um, it's stressful. It definitely is. I'm not going to lie. It's, I'd be lying if I said, oh, it's all freaking peaches and creams. But Honestly, I am going to school for nursing. I like being in the healthcare. I like helping people. There's times where people are paying $3,000 for the medications and I'm like, oh my God, I just found a coupon. It can get you down to a thousand. And they're like so thankful because you saved them $2,000. So things like that, it really does make it worth it. I think it has a really, um, it has a toll on people who it's hard to not take things to heart sometimes because even I'll get super upset like, if I am trying my best with a patient and some people are just really mean sometimes and just know it's never it's never you it's sometimes they just don't understand the process so you always just try to explain it to them at the best that you can a lot of the times people will be upset with you because their doctors aren't calling their scripts in but it's never you personally it's they're frustrated with them not having their medication so always try to remember that too it's never you personally unless you're being rude to them and then they're upset then obviously it's you personally but if you are doing everything you can and you're being honest, you're explaining everything to them, don't let it get to you because, you know, I've had so many times where people are yelling at me on the phone and I'm just like, okay, like just letting them get it out. And then towards the end of the conversation, they're like, I'm so sorry, I'm not meaning to yell at you. I'm just very frustrated. So a lot of the times they will apologize, but I think some people have a really hard time with, um, with people being mean to them, which as anybody, you know, would, it's not right. So I think that is kind of very stressful. So that is my one of my advices to you guys. Also, with how busy it can be and you being pulled left and right, it, it can get very stressful. And I think also that's why some people are kind of just like, this isn't for me because it's just too much at once. My dog is looking for more french fries. So my best advice with that is just go at your pace and do what you can. If you're being pulled left and right and you are exhausted, maybe say something to whoever is directing you. Like if it's too much or if I'm very about hi, speaking up. So if you feel like I'm having a really hard time with this, can you just help me with this? Or don't try to feel like you have to man what you're doing. You, like you have to perfect it if you don't know ask that is like one of my things i always tell all my texts i don't care how busy we are we could be a million people in line five million people in the drive through me on the phone but if you have a question ask me so the second i get off the phone you ask me doesn't matter if i seem stressed or if i or if you don't want to bother anyone because we're so busy, I always say ask questions because at the end of the day, if you're not going to ask that question, 
who is that affecting? Is that affecting the person you think you're gonna bother or is that affecting you and your knowledge? So, do you guys see my dog right now? Do you wanna sit? Come on, come here. Whoa. All right. He wants to join because he's bored. We're about to go on a walk. But anyways, always ask questions. And if you don't understand it, make sure you do understand it after asking. Or if you do it and you don't understand and then it comes up again, you know, just ask the question. That I'm so big on that is always ask. And I'm even when I started, I asked so many questions. I was probably so annoying. Like I know I probably annoyed so many people, but it's like I don't understand and I, I want to understand. So that is definitely in my advice to you guys is if I know a lot of people have come up to me like, what is it like being a pharmacy technician? I have really high anxiety. Um, how, how do you think I would do in the field? And I mean, I think I have anxiety too. <laughs> like I, it is very stressful, but if you just breathe, you can, for us at least, for my company, you get a 15 minute break and then a 30. So you can use both of those depending on how long your shift is. Um, so it's just, if you know how to cope with your anxiety in like stressful situations, I think it will be okay for you. But if you are just like, you can't handle that type of stuff, then it might not be the best, um, be the best field for you. Like I said, I love it so much. There is actually a lot to it. So let me explain a little bit more. So we do have a lead tech. We have our pharmacists, our normal technicians, and then we have our inventory specialists. So there's like a lot of inventory stuff that goes along with this too. Like I said, if you guys want a deeper, deeper video on like all of the details of kind of pharmacy technician, then I can do a part two for you. But we have inventory stuff. So that's like, if things are out of stock, then we have to order it for the next day. We also get our truck. So we have cycle counts to do. We have outdates. So every month we are pulling any expired medications coming up that next month. So we pull all those off the shelf. So making sure none of our customers are getting any of that expired medication. So it is a very important role. I love it. Um, but yeah, there's it, it, it's a lot. It is definitely a lot. But I think that if you are thinking about doing a being a pharmacy technician, I think it's totally rewarding. Once you have that job and you have that in your resume, you can pretty much get a job anywhere. So for me, I'm nationally certified. So if I were to move to California, let's say I could get a job in California because I'm nationally certified. But even if you had that experience of working in the pharmacy for a year, that really opens your horizons to a lot of things. So yeah. That is my advice for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you guys want more of a breakdown, then just let me know in the comments down below. I hope I helped somebody out there and I will see you guys in my next video. Peace. Cooper, wanna say bye? Come here. Wanna go say bye? Come here. Wanna say bye? He's like looking outside. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. He's running away. Okay. Yeah, he's not about it. So, bye!